This is Geometry Lesson 1-6, titled Betweenness and Distance. In this lesson, we are going to spend a great deal of time defining some very basic terms, but these basic terms are very important to your success in this course. We are going to define what is, it is to be between, what is a segment, what is a ray, and we are going to discuss distance. So first, let's talk about what it means to be between in geometry. In the reading, it talked about, is asked the question, is Chicago between Los Angeles and New York? Often people would say yes. In geography, a geography teacher would say, that's a reasonable answer. But in geometry, we need to be very specific. And so we define something to be between as two or a point is between two other points if it is on the same line and its coordinate is between their coordinates. So the key here is that to, in order for points to be between each other, they need to lie on the same line. Okay. The second thing we're going to define this lesson is what is a segment. You have, been, you have looked at segments back in, I think, third grade or even before that. But we're going to be very specific in this course about what it is to be a segment. It is a set consisting of the distinct points A and B. Those are its endpoints, as you can see in this picture below. And all points between A and B denoted AB with this bar over the top. A segment is also called a, leg, a line segment. Okay. So this number line with endpoints negative 3 and 7.4 and all points having coordinates between them makes the segment. So the segment isn't just here and here, the points A and B, it includes everything in between. The symbol that you see here is red, segment AB. And the other thing that you need to be aware of is that AB consists of all points on the lines whose coordinates satisfy the inequality. Negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 7.4. The next thing we're going to define in this lesson is what is a ray? It is the set consisting of the distinct points A, its endpoint, and B, all points between the point A, the point and A, denoted a ray AB. Now a ray seems like a very, very simple thing to define. But over the course of the years, students struggle with naming a ray and identifying exactly what a ray is. So let's take a look at these diagrams here. On the first one you have ray AB. Its endpoint is A. B is contained within the ray, but there are a whole infinite number of points here that are also on this ray. We will name this ray by its endpoint A and another point on it. The endpoint is always listed first and then the point on the ray is listed second and the arrow pointing to the right is put above it. So once again, I have some bulleted points here for you. A ray is named by its endpoint and any other point on the ray. The symbol here is read as ray AB. The left letter represents the endpoint and the right letter represents any other point on the ray. So if you look here, this is ray AC. A is the endpoint. C happens to be a point on the ray. But notice, A is listed first. C is listed second, even though you see it the other way on the actual figure. We also have a pair of what we call opposite rays. Ray AB and ray AC are opposite rays if and only if A is between B and C. So in order for A to be between A and, or B and C, it has to be on the same line, and it is, and it is between C and and B on that line. I'd like you to read through the set of four examples here and try and write the symbol for each of the descriptions listed. Start the video again when you are ready. As you can see here, for number one, a line through G and H. Now we, we discussed what a line looked like back when we were defining the point line plane postulate. 
we name a line by two points on the line and we have the double arrows on top. Doesn't matter which way we put it, either order is fine. Back in one of the first lessons we also talked about distance on a number line. So distance GH, we just put the two points together, we don't have any symbol over the top. Then as discussed in this lesson, segment with endpoint G and H. You can do GH or HG with a, just a plain bar over the top. And then for number four though, it is it has to be in this order, ray with endpoint G. So G is listed first and containing H. So H is a point on the ray. So G first, then H with the arrow over the top. The distance postulate is the last thing we're going to discuss in this lesson. It's our next set of rules, so to speak. The distance postulate as stated in Euclidean geometry, which is once again the, the geometry that we are going to study mainly in this course, is stated as follows. Part A is the uniqueness property. On a coordinatized line there is a unique distance between two points. Basically what that means is that if you have a coordinatized line any two points on those on that line will have a distance. And then in part B, we have the distance formula. We discussed that earlier in this chapter. And if two points on a line have coordinates x and y, the distance between them is the absolute value of x minus y. The third part is called the additive property. And it states if B is on AC, then the distance from AB to BC is the same as the total a to C. Because if you think about it, here's my segment AC. A has to be an endpoint and C has to be an endpoint. So that means that B has to be in between. So if I take my distance from here to here and add it with my distance from here to here, that will give me my total A to C. I would like you to try this first example here in the figure below. I is the point between points K and T, so my segment is KT, and I is in between. If I, T, the distance from I to T, remember two letters next to each other refers to distance, so my distance is 17, and KT, the whole thing, is 30. What is KI? So what is this missing piece? And I can use my additive property to say KI plus IT is equal to KT and we can use algebra to f solve that by substituting in values that I was given. If I s move 17 to over to the other side, KI is going to equal 30 minus 17 which is 13. So my distance from K to I is 13. I have put one last set of examples working on identifying the differences between a line, array, and segments. I know it may seem like we just went over that, but this is something that is so basic and must be really understood in this course for you to be successful. So I would like you to stop the video, fill in your the missing blanks and then start the video when you are finished. You were to fill in the blank with the appropriate term. Here we have a symbol. This is the line determined by points A and B. This symbol here is the ray with endpoint A containing B. Here we have a similar symbol and that is the ray with endpoints B containing A. Here we have a segment with endpoints A, B, and here is the distance between A and B, or the length of segment A, B. This concludes lesson one, six.